ذہنی غلام بنتے ہیں تو یہ یاد رکھیں اصل غلامی سے زیادہ بری ذہنی غلامی ذہنی غلامی کی زنجیریں توڑنا زیادہ مشکل ہوتا ہے جو ابھی افغانستان میں غلامی کی زنجیریں تو توڑ دی ہوں نا something strange and weird happening in Pakistan. We all know that the Pakistani forces, 93,000 and all, surrendered to the Indian Armed Forces on 16th of December 1971. And as a student of military history, I can imagine why they would have done that. The distance between East and West Pakistan was just too massive. And there was this huge landmass of India in between. All flight rights to Pakistan had been severed. There was also the question of superior Indian arms and numbers and also superior Indian leadership. All this, we have understood, we have analyzed. But why am I talking about this today? I'm talking about this today because Pakistan is again on the verge of surrendering to the Tehreek Taliban Pakistan, a terrorist outfit. Hi, I'm Major Gauravari. The Tehreek Taliban Pakistan was raised in 2007 by Betullah Mehsud, a terrorist who belonged to the Mehsud tribes. Now the Tehreek Taliban Pakistan or the TTP as it's known, is functional around the tribal areas between Afghanistan and Pakistan and in the general area you know as Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. It owes fealty to the Afghan Taliban and draws ideological sustenance from Al-Qaeda. Do you remember the time when Imran Khan went on national television and actually celebrated? This was 15th and 16th of August last year. When he spoke about Zehni Azadi, freedom of the mind, freedom of the heart, freedom of the soul. Zehni Ghulami ki zanjeerein tordna zyada mushkal hota hai. Jo abhi Afghanistan mein Ghulami ki zanjeerein to tord di hoon hai. And he meant to say that today the Afghans are free because the American oppressors have left Afghanistan. That was the confidence that Pakistan had in Taliban. And after all, who created the Taliban? To know what is happening in Pakistan today, I'll have to take you back into history. <laughs> Russian forces invade Afghanistan. Pakistan offers itself as a middleman, a conduit for American money and American weapons. Afghans are armed. They are Mujahideen, the holy warriors. They fight against Soviet forces. In 1989, the Soviet forces again cross the Amur River, that famous bridge, and go back into USSR. USSR breaks up into various nation states. And today, it's called Russia. In the interim, there is a huge effort by Pakistan to create something called the Taliban now. Talim in Arabic means education and Taliban means students. The core was always Pakistani students who studied in various madrasas all over Pakistan. They formed the core of Taliban. Former Pakistan Army Chief and President Parvez Musharraf is on record saying that it was his regiment, the Special Services Group or the Special Forces of the Pakistan Army who behaved like mercenaries, took money and actually went inside Afghanistan to fight the Russian forces. Now, all this has a bit of history. For the past 20 years, Pakistan has believed that Afghanistan is its backyard. This program of Afghanistan being its backyard goes back much further. For the last 20 years, when the Americans were there, the Pakistanis were confident that one day the Americans will leave and when the Taliban take over, Afghanistan would be theirs for the taking. Now, what is this whole thing about strategic depth that Pakistani generals speak about so often? What is strategic depth? Look at Pakistan and look at its map. You will realize why Pakistan is always the aggressor in its wars against India. It is not because of bravado. It is not because of courage. Its generals feel that it is strategic necessity. Because if Pakistan allows India to attack first, there will be no Pakistan. Pakistan is geographically narrow. Pakistan is long, but its width is not more than 450 to 650 kilometers. That's how wide Pakistan is. 
And if India attacks from the eastern flank, it will reach Afghanistan in a matter of a day or two. This is what Pakistan fears. Hence this entire concept of strategic depth. Strategic depth in Afghanistan, strategic depth in India. How did Pakistan start strategic depth in India? By starting terrorism in Punjab? By raising the Khalistan bogey? And it did so in Kashmir in 1989 by starting terrorism inside Kashmir. You know, all these names that you hear, Lashkar-e Tayyabad, Jaish Muhammad, Hezbo, Mujahideen. They're all part of this grand design of Pakistan. You know, to give India a hard time in Kashmir, to give India its government and its defense forces death by a thousand cuts, as Ziaul Haq put it. This creates strategic depth of Pakistan. And the logic being that when Pakistan attacks India, and I'm talking about India here, when Pakistan attacks India, there are fifth columnists who are ready in Punjab and in Kashmir who will harass and attack the Indian armed forces. This was Pakistan's grand plan. And what happened was last year when the Afghan Taliban actually entered Kabul and the Americans left in a hurry, the first order of business for the Afghan Taliban was let the tehreek e taliban Pakistan terrorists free. There were thousands of them in Afghan jails put in there by the previous regime. And this was the first order of business. Free the tehreek e taliban Pakistan, they are our brothers. As I said before, the ideological mentors of tehreek e taliban Pakistan are the Afghan Taliban. And the chief of the tehreek e taliban Pakistan has sworn fealty to the chief of the Afghan Taliban. That is how close they were. Pakistan has always maintained that there is a good Taliban and a bad Taliban. Now, what is the story? Good Taliban is the Afghan Taliban, which Pakistanis have always thought supported Pakistan. Bad Taliban is Tehreek Taliban Pakistan, which has been attacking Pakistan since 2007. Now, why is the TTP attacking Pakistan? The TTP attacks Pakistan because it says Pakistan is not an Islamic state at all. It says that the Pakistani constitution is un-Islamic. Why? Because sovereignty belongs to Allah alone. Khud Mukhtari sirf Allah. This is what the TTP says. The TTP says that human beings cannot be bound by rules written by man. They have to follow rules of Allah. They bow down only to Allah. They bow down to nobody else. They also say that the area till Atak actually belongs to them, the tribal people. They talk about greater Afghanistan. They don't believe in the Pakistan flag. They also want a reversal of the Fata merger, the earlier federally administrative tribal areas of Pakistan, the general area of which today is called Khyber Pakhtunko. Now, Rana Sanaullah, the interior minister of Pakistan, very recently said that all the conversations and all the deals with the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan are going to happen under the aegis of the Pakistan constitution. This defies all logic because the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan does not believe in the Pakistani constitution. This is absolute farce, but this is what is being sold to the Pakistani people. That your constitution will be supreme and we will only talk. We will only talk to the tehreek e taliban Pakistan under the Pakistani constitution. Talk to a bunch of terrorists. As I said, they form less than or they have less than 1% of the manpower of the Pakistani armed forces. And they have held an entire nation of 23 to 24 crore people to ransom. This is the power of the tehreek e taliban Pakistan. For long, Pakistan has been saying that India has, at that point in time, when the Americans were uh, there in Afghanistan, India has numerous consulates inside Afghanistan. India has a vibrant embassy inside Afghanistan. India is funding the tehreek e taliban Pakistan. India is uh, training the tehreek e taliban Pakistan, arming them for attacks inside Pakistan. They said, that India is using the tehreek e taliban Pakistan to destabilize Pakistan. But for almost 11 months now, there is no Indian embassy in Afghanistan. There are no consulates in Afghanistan. But who is attacking the Pakistani armed forces? Who is killing or who has killed more than 180 Pakistani soldiers and officers in the past 11 months? Why are the Baloch now together with the TTP? Is it because the Baloch feel that they need better firepower to cause harm to the Pakistani state? Or is it because the Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan wants to make inroads inside Balochistan?